Today we are going to look at some high stakes battling poker from a 5, 10, $100 straddle game that took place at Hustler Casino Live recently. This is the biggest pot ever played on their stream, as far as I know, and it features some pretty wild action. Let's get right to it. And Ludacris is still down a ton, but that is going to get him a little bit closer to even. Eli's had a tough night. He has already rebought. His rebuy was to 45,000. You can see he only has 35 behind, so. Probably there's an advantage for people who like to have fun. Come play my little game. That's what we do. We fire the shots. I even like the sizing on that one. Yeah, I did too. No, it was a great, it was a great size. Once a month, maybe. And play poker. I would rather do a game for pretend. So when we're done, we just start now. And Luda, dude, just back to back says, "If I got a hand, I'm three betting it. Let's go." Yeah, Ludacris definitely uh, subscribes to the mantra of raise or fold. There's no, no, no between. No between. I mean, yeah, out of position, that, that really seems to be his entire strategy. In this hand, we see Big John under the gun is straddling for $100. He started with 2800 bucks. Only 28 big blinds deep now. It's important to note whenever there is a straddle in play, that's effectively the new big blind size. So if you were... $1,000 deep at a 5 10 limit game, well, now you're only 10 big blinds deep. You're going to have a lot of swings. Keep that in mind. Make sure you learn to play appropriately for your specific stack size. Folds around to Eli in the cutoff, who raises it up to $500 with the Ace-2 offsuit. This may be a little bit loose, but whatever. Folds around to Nick V in the small blind, who opts to call with pocket sixes, which is perfectly fine. You may just want to go ahead and put in a three bet from the small blind. You're going to find it's actually kind of tough to play from the small blind with two blinds yet to act behind you. So you may not want to have much of a calling strategy in general, but pairs flop very, very well. You either flop a set or you don't, right? And for that reason, calling with those hands is usually very reasonable. Ludacris. Ludacris. Ha <laughs> ha. Cute. Ludacris in the big blind with Jack 10 of clubs has a hand he can also call or three bet with depending on how he is playing. It is worth noting all three players in this hand are pretty deep stacked, given the $100 straddle. Eli, the opener, has $35,000, so effectively 350 big blinds. Nick in the small blind has effectively 800 big blinds with $80,000. And uh, Luda Chris has even more than that. So we are playing very, very deep stacked here. When you're playing very, very deep stacked, if you think you can re-raise and get the initial raiser to fold a lot, but get called by the small blind a lot, that's actually going to be really good for Luda Chris because... He's going to be in position, super deep stacked with a hand that flops really well. Now, if he thinks he's going to get called by Eli a ton or re-raised by Eli a ton, then you probably just want to call and see the flop. So you can see that various pre-flop strategies are viable right off the bat, depending on how you expect your opponents to react. So he does opt to put in the three bet, bumps it up to 2,600 bucks. Nice size. I'm going to go even a little bit larger when we are playing super deep stacked. Ace two obviously folds. Pocket six is in a spot where... It's kind of unfortunate, but I think you just have to call and try to set mine. Whenever you're really deep stacked, you just want to try to flop sets. Hands that can make the effective nuts go way up in value when you are deep stacked, because whenever you do happen to make a premium hand, you're very likely to win a big pot. We're out of position to the initial raiser. How about a set of sixes? Oh my gosh, with a club a plus draw. draw. Hold on to everything, guys. Let's see. Let's let's, let's watch this one in, in silence if oh, we can. Two biggest stacks at the table. <laughs> Pot is already 6,000, bloated with the three bet. And Ludacris bets 5K. Wow, full pot. Bertucci basically has the nuts right now, although Ludacris is the one player at the table who could theoretically check rate three bet with a hand like 7 4. And Bertucci. Min click it? He min, yeah, he min check raised. Clicks it back. Pot is already $21,000, five to call. Ludacris is obviously not folding with a flush draw. Okay, yes, <laughs> okay, twice. A lot of times he said twice, I'm like, no. Stop doing whatever you're doing and watch this one. Okay. Take a little edible, love it. Call center. There's a call from Ludacris. Pot is now $26,000. Six right in the window, six, five, three on the flop. This gives Nick a set and Ludacris a flush draw. Nick checks with his pocket sixes. You may say, why in the world would you want to check with pocket sixes? 
Don't you want to bet to charge the draws? But you have to realize that very often Ludacris is not going to have a draw, right? The only draws that make a whole lot of sense are exactly club flush draws. And if he has clubs, he could obviously have hearts or diamonds or spades, right? And hands with a four, but hands with a four aren't going to re-raise all that often. So this is a spot where you don't really want to be too concerned with not, well, with charging the draws, right? Because they just don't exist all that much in Ludacris's range, even though he does have one of them this time. So you have to ask, how will my opponent play if they have a hand like aces? Will they continuation bet? Almost certainly, right? How will they play if they have a hand like queen jack of hearts? Will they throw out a continuation bet with that? Probably. I mean, if the guy's name is Luda Chris, he probably is going to continuation bet a ton. So you want to check and give him every possible opportunity to bet in the spot. You do not want to lead. I think that'd be a pretty big error, unless you know your opponent's going to go insane, go ludicrous against a raise, or against a lead. So... Nick makes a standard check. I think this is a pretty good spot to go for a continuation bet with the Jack-10 of clubs because if we let it go check-check, and we're certainly being bluffing the turn in the river if we do let it go check-check and we miss, but when we're playing really deep stack, we can bet here and call a raise. The main time you do not want to bet with your draws are when they have just a lot of natural showdown value to where you don't really have to improve, or when if you bet and get raised, you would have to fold. Notice here, though, Pretty much no matter how much Ludacris bets, if he gets raised, say he even bets big, like say he bets 5,000 into the 6,000 pot, and Chris raises, it's only going to be to like 20,000 at the most, right? So then you can call 15 to try to win the uh, 55,000 pot in position. It's not all that bad, right? So this is a spot where I think you definitely want to be betting with your draws that lack showdown value like Jack High does. In terms of sizing, I think you probably want to go small in general. Because in this scenario, you have to presume Nick will have some sets, whereas Ludacris has almost none. Whenever your range contains almost none of the effective nut hands, but your opponent's does, you usually want to use small sizing. That said, big's probably fine too. He does go 5,000, so pretty big bet. Over to Nick with a set. I think you probably want to raise it up immediately, unless you're just really sure Chris doesn't have anything. Um, if you can just like make some live read and tell that Chris hates his hand, I guess you want to call, but... Clearly, Chris is not giving off any sort of live read here. So given that, I think I'd probably just go ahead and put in a raise to charge whatever draws do exist in Ludacris's range and also to get full value from over pairs. Because imagine Ludacris does have a hand like pocket tens. He's not going to fold to a raise. But if you call, there are a lot of really bad turns for pocket tens. I also want to mention that I do not know how these two players have been playing. I know there's been a bunch of streams on Hustler Christino Live's YouTube channel. Make sure you check that out. But if these players are in there battling really hard on a regular basis, then you definitely want to raise with your nut hands. Nick does opt to put in the raise. He bumps it up to the minimum. I kind of hate this play. The problem with raising the minimum is that while you will get called a lot, the hands that you really want to charge and get a lot of money in against, you now get way less money in against compared to if you use the bigger raise size. So whenever you raise minimum, you have to ask, will my opponent call with random overcards? I think if Ludacris does have a hand like Ace of Clubs, Queen, he'll probably call a minimum raise, but may not call a 15,000 raise. But that's about it, right? Um, maybe you think that this 5,000 raise is going to make Ludacris lose his mind and re-raise with all sorts of garbage. If that's the case, then the small re-raise is great. But in general, when you're very deep stacked and you have the nuts immediately, and it's kind of vulnerable to getting outdrawn, you want to just go ahead and build the pot immediately. And the thing is, is that especially if you don't do a whole lot of check min raising, this should make alarm bells go off in your opponent's head. Like right here, if I'm in Ludacris's shoes and I had pocket aces, I would be very, very cautious, right? It's a hand you can't really fold, but at the same time, <laughs> you don't love it when your opponent puts in the min raise because whenever someone min raises, they're essentially saying, assuming they're anywhere decent at poker, is that I will give you great pot odds and you still cannot beat me. And in this scenario, he's also giving you position. So if you're giving me great pot odds and position and you're saying that I still can't win, well, what must you have? You must have a very good hand, right? So I think in this spot, you usually want to go just a little bit bigger to give yourself more perceived fold equity for the times that you have the draws, right? If you check raise minimum, your opponent's going to call you a ton, and that's really bad whenever you have random bad flush draws, right? So I think in this scenario, Chris just wants to go for a slightly bigger raise, like 15,000, and just get more money from the pairs and, and charge the draws a little bit more while realizing you're not going to be able to get called by random ace high or king high with a club, but I think that's fine. So, facing the min raise, like I said, alarm bells will be going off. I think there's only one option now, and that is just to call with the Jack-10 of clubs. Because if you re-raise and your opponent has the nuts, you can get all the money in. And that would be really, really bad. 
Some people think, oh, I should always raise with my draws, but not when you have no fold equity or little to no fold equity. And I think here when Nick check raises minimum his range, assuming he's a normal-ish poker player, assuming he's not insane, he's going to have a lot of sets. He's going to have, have a lot of good flush draws or combo draws and maybe a few stone bluffs. And, you know, obviously you'd rather him get off the stone bluffs, but you just can't risk running into the super nuts when he does show you a set. Oh, Turns my seven of gosh. Oh, that is, the, I mean, the worst card in the deck if you're for too cheap. So bad. I mean, if your opponent had a four, they've got straight, they had a club draw, they've got it. Pot is $26,000. Yeah, he checks it over. It's a good check. Probably just going to check call. Now, what's your sizing here for your ludicrous? Nick has 69, 70,000 behind, we'll call it. So. Yeah, I'd be, I'd go in the neighborhood of 15 to 20. So oh, I can, wow, that much? Yeah, I would set up, I'd be setting up a river jam. I think because with the board being so connected, Nick himself may check some straights here. Looks like he bet about 16, maybe? 18,000, so right in the neighborhood of you just mentioned. Pot is 44,000, we'll call it. 18 to call. When he calls this, we're, we're, we're presuming he's going to, it'll be 61,000 in the pot. Yep, and it's going to set up just a perfect four fifths pot jam. Oh, this is sick. Oh, this is so sick. Board pair. So turn is a jack of clubs. Clearly awful for Nick. I think he can either check or bet small in this scenario. You may say, why, why in the world would you bet small? Because you can still charge hands like pocket jacks or pocket aces if you go for a $8,000 bet. Checking is tough because it, to some extent, forces you into a bluff catching spot, which is fine, but it's certainly not ideal. The one nice thing about checking in this spot is that Either you have the best hand or the best draw, and you're probably not folding it on the river anyway. So this is a cool spot where I think I like checking, especially if Ludacris is actually Ludacris. Um, but if he's more normal and he'll check back stuff like Ace of Clubs King every time, or Ace of Clubs Jack every time, or Ace with a Jack of Clubs every time, then I think you'd probably rather just go ahead and put in a bet. You may say if you bet and you get raised, isn't that really bad? Yeah, it's not great, but you have to realize that Nick's range, like I just lined out, is a lot of sets and a lot of flush draws. On the flop to check raise so if this range is a lot of sets and flush draws flush draws all made flushes and obviously ludicrous doesn't get to raise all that often into a range that contains a lot of flushes after nick checks i think ludicrous should definitely go for a bet pots twenty five thousand. he wants to get stacks in by the river he needs to be able to get seventy thousand in so i think he needs to go for a pretty chunky bet here like i outlined ludicrous's range is going to be flushes which is way less likely whenever ludicrous has a jack and the ten of clubs in his hand because Nick can't have ace jack of clubs, ace ten of clubs, king jack of clubs, king ten of clubs. It starts to make it very unlikely he actually has a flush. So Ludacris probably has a set or maybe even a straight with like ace four in the check raise. So if you're against a set or a hand like ace four, how much will those call? Probably a lot, right? So given they will probably call a lot, I think you probably want to go for a pretty big size of like 20,000. If you think Ludacris's range is all gar- I think, sorry, if you think Nick's range is all garbage though, then you probably want to go small. He does go 18,000. I like this very much. And now Nick has an interesting decision. I want you to take a second and think about what you would do in Nick's spot facing this 18,000 bet with 70,000 remaining in your stack with a set on a four flush three or three flush four straight board. I want you to pause the video and write in the comment section below if you would let go of your set, if you would call, if you would click it back to the minimum, or if you would jam it all in. Pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. I think there's only one option. Did you get it right? I hope you got it right. The option that makes the most sense by a mile is to call. You cannot fold in this scenario, especially if you think Ludacris may be value betting with a hand like aces with the ace of clubs or bluffing with a hand like ace of clubs king, right? And even if you are against a flush or a straight, you still have a bunch of outs going to the river. So this is a spot where folding's out of the question. Raising doesn't make a whole lot of sense because if you raise, you're only gonna be getting it in against flushes and straights, most likely, which you're in pretty bad shape against, so you don't wanna raise. So you wanna call. I know that may sound like process of elimination, but you also wanna think, is calling viable? Because calling may be bad too. But calling's fine, right? We induce bluffs. We have a draw that we're getting okay odds to draw too. So calling is the play that makes the most sense by a mile. Oh, it's a five! Oh my god, no! Does, does Vertucci play this as a check race? Oh. 
it's so close. I mean, there's a lot of hands you really don't want to check back, though. He could conceivably just rip it. I mean, Ludacris has got to be aware that Bertucci's range is really narrow here, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, he's just going to... Small bet. Whoa, this might induce I a shove. I have to say, this might induce the shove from Luda, man. This could be genius from Bertucci. Maybe Nick has a five here sometimes. Yeah, but what does he and have? Is How does he have a five, though? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, but oh, no. Oh, he's counting out raising chips. There's the raise. 35,000. All in. All in. Nick is all you can eat. Oh, my goodness. Nick does make the call, as he should. We head off to the river. And the river is the... Ooh, five of spades. Giving Nick a full house. Another interesting spot. I definitely think a lot of people automatically bet out in this scenario. I don't really love that play because you have to think that if Ludacris does have a flush, he's obviously going to bet the river. If he has an overpair, he may go for a bet on the river. And if he has nothing, he's going to go for a bet on the river. And that allows Nick to get in a chunky check raise. Uh, the other option, I think, is to bet small. Pot 60,000. If you bet something like 4,000, maybe that will induce Ludacris, if he's actually Ludacris, to put in a bluff raise or even a value raise with a hand like, well, a bad flush like he has. Or you could, you could also just rip it in if you're pretty sure that uh, Ludacris does have a very good hand, but I don't think there's any reason to think that given he could easily be sitting here with ace high or king high. So given I think Ludacris' range contains a lot of, or at least some, some number of unpaired high cards, I think you either want to check to induce bluffs or bet small to induce bluffs. Nick does go for the small bet though. Nice inducing play. And this is a cool spot now for Ludacris because when your opponent bets small, you have to figure out what their range looks like. Most people, when they bet small, and from a GTO point of view, when someone bets small on the river, they usually have a lot of marginal-ish made hands that are, you know, in pretty good shape. Plus, if they're good, a few super nut hands and a few bluffs. Now, this is a very odd scenario because, remember, Chris bet the turn pretty big, which kind of means he was the polarized player. He's a player who should have a lot of really good hands. So... I'm not exactly sure what Nick's range should look like in this scenario, but you have to ask, is he ever stone bluffing? I mean, maybe, probably not, but maybe. Also, is he ever betting with a hand for 9,000 that will call any raise that loses to Ludacris's hand? So what, what hand will bet the river small and then call a raise? Well, a five would make a lot of sense. Maybe he has a hand like, I don't know, <laughs> ace five with the ace of clubs or something. Maybe that's a hand that would bet the river and then call a raise, I guess. We have to realize... Even if he's sitting here with a five, it's not like a great hand on the river. Um, what do you do it with a straight? A random four? Probably not. Would you do it with a bad flush? I mean, maybe he'd do it with a bad flush, but remember, Ludacris blocks the flushes to death. So this is a spot where I think alarm bells would be going off in my head. And uh, I realize that the Jack-10 of clubs is going to be good a lot of the time. I know it's not good this time. I can read the board, YouTube commenters. I realize the Jack-10 of clubs is not good this time, but I do think you're going to win this hand a lot with the Jack-10 of clubs, but... If you raise, I'm not actually sure a whole lot of worse hands can call you. So I think the play, as unfortunate it is with this flush, is to just call. Ludacris gives it some thought, though, and puts in a raise. 35,000, 26,000 on top. Okay, he goes for the value. And then, pretty much immediately, Nick V rips all of his money in. $17,000 more. Oh, this is not what Ludacris wanted. So here... If you know that Nick is insane, <laughs> such that he will either drastically overvalue a bad flush, or he will run some insane bluff with the Ace of Clubs, even though the Ace of Clubs is not the nuts here, or a hand like Ace of Clubs 5, right? Would he really lead small on the river and then turn it into a bluff once he gets raised? If you think that's the case, I mean, maybe you can find a call. I realize we're getting amazing pot odds. Amazing, 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 amazing pot odds. We have to put in 17,000 to win a pot that's going to go up to 180. Need to be good almost never. The problem, though, is that I think we're good <laughs> almost never. About as close to never as we can possibly be. If you have watched my videos here on YouTube, thanks for being here, by the way. If you enjoyed these videos, click like and click subscribe. Also, click the notification bell. If you've watched my videos, you know whenever a lot of river action happens, 
doesn't seem like people do a whole lot of bluffing. So the question then becomes, does Ludacris' Jack Ten of Clubs beat any value hands? I think the answer is definitely no. Does he beat... Does, he, does Nick have any bluffs in his range such that he would actually play them in this manner? Lead small on the river and then snap rip it in for 17,000 more, giving your opponent amazing odds. Probably not. So I suppose that means you should fold. It's an annoying spot for sure. I will say that I, I didn't like Ludacris's river raise to begin with because this does happen sometimes. But to be fair, you can make a river raise knowing that if I get called, I'm going to be ahead way more than 50% of the time. And if I get jammed, I fold. I lose basically every time. So the question is, is was this river raise too thin to begin with? And I think it probably was just given the way this hand has played out. Unless, of course, Nick is insane. If you all have watched Hustler Casino's live streams, let me know if Nick is insane. If Nick is insane, then, you know, all this doesn't necessarily go out the window, but calling becomes way more viable when you know your opponent may sporadically run some insane bluff. But, at least in my experience, when you're playing $75,000 deep, or whatever they're playing, at a 5-10 game, most people aren't putting $75,000 in, even with 100 ante, or 100 uh, straddle, without a very, very good hand. Most people don't do that. Every once in a while, you find someone special, though. In which case, yeah, yeah maybe got to go for a thin call. It's 17,000 to call, but Ludacris is wow. never good here. Never. How can you ever be moved all in? Or full house, no problem, huh? Ludy even says... Flush. I know I'm never good here. I know I'm never good. How much is more after the 35? Right, um, let me bring in the 35. Save 20 grand or not? Sorry. Um, 10, 16. Hmm. What the? What the? If pocket sixes or pocket threes. Wow. Wow. How lucky are you? Pocket sixes or pocket threes? I almost just called. I don't even know if Rattucci is actually moving all in with, with threes. Yeah, maybe. I don't it's, even know if he's doing it with threes. It's a full house, but there's so much more. Run 35, right? I'm running the 35. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 17,000 to call. Sixes, fives, or threes. Sixes, fives, or threes. Sevens, maybe? That's just how lucky you are. Dude, this is actually such horse <laughs> How you run so good against me. I've literally never done this opposite to you. Wow. <laughs> Break the cards. <laughs> I think, I think I'm just, just, he's never bluffing here. He can't believe the spot. And finally, finally, makes the good disciplined fold. Certainly an annoying spot, but when you're good, literally never. Sometimes you just have to let it go. Nick wins the nice pot, $150,000. Congrats to him. Good job, good work. That's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this video, do me a quick favor. Click that like and subscribe button below again. And make a point to have a wonderful day. Good luck in your games. Have fun. I appreciate you being here. And I'll talk to you next time. How would you like to have one of these championship bracelets from winning a major poker tournament? Well, here, I have plenty. I'll give you one of these. Oh. Couldn't quite get it to you. Instead, you're going to have to win your own. To get started, click the subscribe button.